Howdy guys and gals, I'm Kyle Broderick. Welcome to The Social Regressive. Today we're out here at a field and we are going to be testing the brand new Falcon S8i. The S8i has been around for a little while, but I call this one brand new because they put a new reticle in it. This is an illuminated uh, kind of a version of their B20 reticle. I think they're calling this the B22i. So what this thing does is it has milliradian holds uh, you know, up, down, left, right, and then it includes in the center a great big red, uh, just an, an MOA dot, and a, a diamond sort of shape. So this is set up not only for working at very close range, but at longer range as well. And that is going to pair really well with the whole setup of the scope overall. You've probably seen this kind of thing a lot, the uh, this scope that has basically no objective lens at the other end. Uh, you see these things in 3-gun, which is I think kind of where these were spawned. That's the first time I ever saw them and you see people putting these on their ARs so that they can you know kind of have a, a flexible shooting platform but I think in a lot of cases the uh, this type of scope has kind of gone wrong a lot of these have reticles that I have not found interesting at all uh, they just don't seem to really be set up for the sort of work that these were actually designed to do, which is being able to engage a target that's really, really close up, like, you know, basically within touching distance, all the way out to some of the longer stuff. And this is, this one is just special. It's a 1 to 8x, so you get lots of flexibility in the zoom. That's a massive zoom ratio. So this one especially should be set up very well for, uh, kind of short, medium, out to longer range targets. To test this today, uh, we're going to be shooting 75 grain Hornady boat tail hollow points. This is my hand load. I took the, the can off the end just because uh, it's going to make things uh, much easier to hold. <laughs> this thing's going to be kind of barrel heavy as it is. It has a little bit of a, a thicker H-bar barrel on the end here. So yeah, we're just shooting 223, and if you'll see over my shoulder here, I have some targets out at various ranges. The first one is going to be 25 yards, then we have 50 yards. The one way out in the shade, in uh, tactical cardboard brown, that one is at 250 yards. And then way, way, way back there, if you look uh, past that, that little uh, crosshair target down on the ground, you're going to see a white steel silhouette target. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a point system, we're going to kind of time this, and I'm going to be shooting with my father-in-law. We're going to uh, kind of compete at this. So uh, we're going to get two shots at each target. If we take the shot while standing, that's worth five points. If we take the shot while sitting or kneeling, that's worth four points, and then three points for a prone shot. I don't know how all this is going to add up. I just kind of came up with that this morning. Uh, so I'll have to come back and actually tell you what the scores would be or if the scores even matter. The real point, though, is to test this thing out and see how it works when we're kind of shuffling around between 1x at these close targets all the way up to eight. And then afterward, uh, we'll kind of do a post-mortem and we'll talk about what it was like to shoot the scope and some of the features on here. Uh, some of them are not quite evident just by looking at it, but this has some really neat tricks. And here we go. Are you seeing a right to left wind? Uh, a little bit. Well, actually, more now. It's no, it's left. Wait a minute, hold on. Put up some grass up in the air. Yep, it's left. It's, it's right to left. Are you going at the far target now? Yeah. Hit it. Was that second one a hit too? I didn't hear it. Okay, clear. All right. Obviously, I'm not going to take that shot standing up.
just over the left shoulder. There you go, nice hit. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Lay it on me. what direction the wind is going at all? Out there? Yeah. Uh, that mirage kept switching back and forth. All right, here we go. Go. Left or right? Okay. Off the, you were just off to the left, off the target. I didn't see where it went. I've learned a couple things, so I'm gonna try changing things up just a little bit. All right. All right, here we go. On safe. Ready, Freddy. What do you got? Still reading left to right? From the right? What's that? Wind's coming from the right. Ah. Now it's coming from the left. Uh, halfway down on the very left edge. Okay. Yeah, all right. You got the, I saw the bullet fly on that one. You got it twice. One's Woo. on the left edge, the other's maybe six inches off the left edge, about wrist height. One's elbow. Great man. I'm not doing this for time. <laughs> There's no point in that for me. I could fall down, but I don't want to. All right, center your wind. Oh, no, wait, it's left right now. Aim left edge. Hit! Nice shot! I didn't mean to. Hit! Nice! <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut the first one. <laughs> <laughs>
I pulled that trigger while I was moving, or I didn't mean to send it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always nice to hit something you didn't mean to, and it's just like take credit. <laughs> the challenge is over. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Blah. It's like it's just starting. Yeah, I think I need to leave that in. Yeah. The shooting challenge is over and it did take me a little while to kind of get used to things and get moving a little bit quicker. That's usually my problem. I'm really uh, uh, kind of slow with everything that I do, which is probably why I shoot prone a lot, but it was still a whole lot of fun. Uh, let me talk a little bit about the setup on the rifle as we shot it today. This is a Rock River Arms LAR-15 Car A4 in 223. It has a 223 wieldy uh, chamber in there. And this is pretty much what came from the factory, just a couple little changes. Uh, it, it started out a very accurate rifle. It still continues to be as long as I uh, hand load correctly. But uh, yeah, back here we just have the typical uh, a4 stock or whatever. Up here, this is just a, a quad rail. I'd like to swap this out sometime. I could really tell doing some of the shorter range shooting that this would have benefited from one of those really long skinny rails that you can hold on to way out there. I know that you can get kind of tired holding a, a rail really far out, but if you have to shoot really quickly and steadily, I found that it really does work. So I might be doing a mod on that a little bit in the future. Magpul AFG and uh, just a little UTG bipod. Uh, up front here, we have a YHM muzzle brake. It's also the attachment for the suppressor if I wanna put that on there. And this thing has turned out to be really uh, effective. I've been just shocked by this thing. I'm used to shooting with the suppressor on or you know, just with a bird cage. And um, yeah, this is the first time that I've shot with just the muzzle brake attached and I am loving it. This new model, the, the old one had, it was pretty ineffective. It had these little holes drilled through it and it just didn't really have that kind of chamber area to uh, you know, to kind of pick up a lot of gases and kind of move the rifle forward. This one works just great. You can see that it has a whole lot of real estate in there, a whole lot of uh, volume. So this thing was very functional. And standing off to the side when my father-in-law was shooting, it was, uh, <laughs> I got this huge wave of air coming in. So it must be doing a good job. Uh, let's see, the scope itself, we were both really impressed with how it performed today. And it, it really does that job that I was talking about where you wanna be able to, like in this case, you know, kind of defend a homestead against everything from, uh, you know, a, a creature or, you know, some baddie or whatever that's close up to your house, all the way out to the edge of your property. This actually will do the trick, we found that out. This was perfectly up to the task of hitting the, uh, the, the 425 yard target, as well as that, that um, the 25 and the 50, rolled back on one X. Now this is one of the funky things about this style of optic. When you're going, when you're taking a magnified optic and you're rolling it back to one X, especially when you have a fixed parallax like this does, this is fixed at 100 yards, everything closer than 100 yards is gonna get this crazy curvature to it. It's gonna get this massive barrel distortion. And this does have that, but it's only if you're really thinking about it. In terms of actual shooting, it just didn't even pop into my head at all. I didn't even notice. I was just getting on target and shooting. And that's something that's going to affect, I think every scope of the type, you're gonna get that barrel distortion. If you're closer than it's fixed parallax, uh, and really I was expecting to maybe be missing that parallax adjustment uh, since this is kind of a higher magnification one all the way up to eight. But you know, really I, I don't miss it. I think that it worked just fine. Uh, and in general, you probably heard that anything up to nine X, maybe 10 X, you don't need parallax adjust. So yeah, not really necessary. The, the mount that I have it in today, this is a Weaver. This is their uh, SPR mount, if I remember correctly. This has some nice thumb nuts here on the, uh, the side. And so it's you know kind of a quick detach rig, works really well. And it only took me four shots, I think, to get this thing zeroed. So again, this is everything that I've come to expect from Falcon. They make really nice optics. Uh, everything always tracks really well in my Falcons on the, uh, the turrets or in the reticle itself. Today was no exception. This really is every bit as good a scope as the M14, M18, M18 Plus that I've reviewed in the past. This is every bit as good. All it does is just come up with a new form factor. And yeah, it, it really works. Let's talk about features and form factor on this. This is a one to eight by 24 millimeter scope. And with such a small objective, you probably assume that it's not going to collect all that much light and you'd be right. 
compared to the M18 Plus, which does a phenomenal job at dusk and down into night, I compared the two side by side, and yes, this one could not collect as much light. If you wanna be able to pick up more details, if it is starting to get a bit dark on you, roll it back to 1X, and then you're gonna be able to take as much light as this thing will you know, be able to suck through that objective lens. The weight on this is quite nice, and that's one of the reasons why we did some offhand shooting today. Normally I do prone stuff, normally my rifles are heavy, normally the scopes are heavy, but at 17 ounces, this is quite doable on an offhand rifle. This felt very comfortable to shoot today. The turrets and reticle are both MRAD based, so they're going to work in concert really well together. It is second focal plane, so it's going to put the, the reticle back here, and it's going to measure true at that full 8X. As you're dialed back to one, and this is one of the things that I'm gonna talk about when I do a full series where I'm talking about what I think about optics, uh, I think that second focal plane is perfect because at one X, I'm not thinking about various drop values. I'm close enough that it doesn't really matter. And if I'm at, you know, shooting at something that's further off, I'm not gonna be dialed at one X, I'm gonna be all the way up on eight. That's when it's gonna measure true and that's when it really matters. So I think this is just a brilliant design. The turrets each measure 30 milliradians in either direction, so that's up, down, left, right. And in today's shooting, we did use both the turrets and we used the reticle all by itself. So I did a couple of strings where I was just shooting using only the reticle, not touching any of the dials. And then I did some where I was using the dials for the further shots. And in both cases, there doesn't seem to be any issue. Both of them track reliably. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.